Well, my name is John Huxley uh, from the University of Nottingham. What I'd like to talk to you about is the treatment of individual lame cows based on some of the work which Dairy Co have been funding with us over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. I think it's important to say uh, it's a collaborative research project with us at the University of Nottingham plus colleagues at the Royal Veterinary College at Bristol and at the SAC. We've put together an expert team and what we've been concentrating on initially is the treatment of individual lame cows. Now of course that doesn't mean to say that prevention isn't the key because it absolutely is. Um, but we've been concentrating in this work just on the treatment of individual lame cows and what I'd like to do is run you through some of our findings and, and what we're now thinking is best for, for the treatment of these animals. So, to start, uh, what I'd like to do is, is just talk about the, the Dairy Co Mobility Scoring System, um, particularly the, the Score 2 and the Score 3 cows, uh, because it's, it's important and that everything that I'm going to talk about in the next five or six minutes relates just as much to Score 2 cows as well as Score 3. So score two are impaired mobility or identifiably lame. You can pick a leg which is lame in these score two cows. And then the score three, the severely uh, impaired mobility, obviously lame animals. Um, and of course I appreciate that you spend an awful lot of time with your cows and this is something you're doing all the time on a daily basis. Um, but I really uh, found it useful um, actually formally going through the mobility scoring process. Uh, I was born in a dairy farming family, I've spent my entire life with, with dairy cows, working life with dairy cows, and I was formally taught mobility scoring uh, about 10 years ago, and it really did change my attitude and opinion to, to lame cows, because whilst absolutely I was seeing the score 3 cows, it, it completely changed my opinion on these score 2 cows. These are much more difficult to see, and just by uh, normal observation of cows, it's quite easy to miss some of these score, score 2 cows and it is really important because all the things I'm going to talk about apply to score 2 as well as score 3 cows. So, if we just come over uh, initially and, and talk about what the impacts of, of lameness are um, on, on cows. Lame cows give less milk and it's actually surprisingly large amounts uh, of milk. So for an average case of, of lameness, it'll be somewhere in the region of two, three, four, five, six hundred litres less per lactation. And again, it's important to reiterate that score two as well as score three cows. They take longer to get in calf. So again, for an average cow, average case of lameness, uh, before conception, uh, it'll be something in the region of 20, 30, 40 days longer to get in calf. So, two to 600 litres less milk, 20 to 40 days longer to get in calf. They're more likely to be cold, animals which are lame, they're in pain and discomfort, and of course all those things mean that they're costing your business a lot of money. And I think key really is to point out that these are the two main costs. The less loss of milk, and the extension of the calving interval uh, are the main costs. And the reason I highlight that is because those are hidden costs. These are not costs that you directly see. And that's particularly true for uh, giving less milk. What we are increasingly recognising is that lameness is a disease of high production. So it's actually your best cows which go lame. Um, and the reason I highlight that is because what they tend to do is they tend to drop back to somewhere near average for the herd. So they start as your best cows, yield-wise, and they drop back to somewhere near average. So it's not that they're dropping below average and becoming the, the, the less productive animals, but they started as the best and dropped somewhere near to average. So these cows are having big impacts um, on, your, on your productivity. If we come over to, to the slide, because this really is the, the key component what I'd like to talk about now for the rest of the presentation. This is around the early and effective treatment of lameness because it's becoming increasingly apparent from some of the work that we're doing has been done over the last five or eight years that this is a key concept around early and effective. So first of all, what do we mean by early? Early means as soon as a cow is identifiably lame. Um, it's, it, what we know about looking at, at, at cows which are routinely mobility scored is that cows don't go sound score three le severely lame what they tend to do is they tend to go up an escalator through score two just identifiably lame through to score three 
Uh, and so early means identifying these score two cows as soon as they go lame. And that's where mobility scoring can really come into its own. And effective, I'll talk about effective treatment in a second, but the work is now demonstrating these key points. That first of all, cows which are treated early and effectively recover more quickly. So if a cow is left to be lame, mildly lame, score two um, for a few weeks before she's treated, they actually take longer to recover. So even if they're treated perfectly, it'll take them longer to recover. And then a second key point is that cows which are treated early and effectively are less likely to go lame again in the future. So what that means is if, if a cow is left and isn't treated as soon as she, go lame, she goes lame, what that actually can mean is that she's more likely to relapse with cases of lameness again in the future. So I think of these cows now increasingly a little bit like the high cell count cow, the problem cow. So if you have a, a case of mastitis which you don't quite get on top of, those cows keep breaking down with a case of mastitis and can be very difficult to treat. And the same appears true of lameness in cows. So if we don't treat those cases early and effectively, you're actually storing up or running the risk of storing up more problems for the future. And of course, if those two things are true, if we can treat cows early and effectively, we'll see less impact on yield and fertility and therefore an improvement in, in profitability. So, the work that we've been doing over the last 18 months has been concentrating on the claw horn lesions. These lesions, soul hemorrhage, soul ulceration, and white line disease. So we haven't been working on digital dermatitis. It's a different disease, it's a bacterial condition, there's lots of good quality work going on in that area, but we've been concentrating on the treatment of the claw horn lesions. <coughs> um, and it's also worth highlighting that because we've been treating cows early in the course of disease, we've been seeing some quite mild lesions um, when we've been treating these cows, but we've still been getting some of the benefits. So the trial we've been running has been taking these cows with claw horn lesions and we've been testing uh, best treatments. Because what's remarkable is that the, how we treat lame cows has never been tested experimentally. Um, so we don't know exactly what the best treatments are for these animals. Now that's not to say that what we are currently doing is wrong, but it's more to say that we don't know what the best treatments are, because clearly what we want to do is know exactly what, what treatments deliver the best outcomes as quickly as we possibly can, because then early and effective, um, we can take advantage of this early and effective treatments, treatment strategy. So we've been testing four treatments. So treatment group one just refused, uh, received a therapeutic trim. So we identified the, the claw horn lesion and we trimmed it, we trimmed it as we thought uh, it should be um, trimmed. Treatment group two had the same therapeutic trim plus a block on the sound claw. Treatment group three had a therapeutic trim and a three-day course of, of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, anti-inflammatory or analgesic pain-relieving drugs, three-day course. And then treatment group four received a therapeutic trim a block on the sound claw and a three-day course of non-steroidal. Now unfortunately we've only just uh, very recently finished that study so uh, I'm not in a position to share results at the moment because we haven't finished the analysis uh, but we'll hopefully have those results out within the next two to four months which will really help us to, to feed into the industry what the best way of, of treating these cows is. However, if we come to, to this graphic here this is one of the farms that was on our study. So uh, we went out to commercial units to operate this, this trial. This is one of the farms that was involved. Uh, it's a 250 cow unit. Uh, it's fairly average. It does nothing particularly un unusual. Um, when we first got involved with this farm, when we first mobility scored the cows on this farm, 30% were score two and 7% were score three. That makes it about average for the UK. 30-35% of animals uh, either, either score two or three. Now it's important to say nothing else changed on this unit over the, the next 50 weeks apart from we went in to conduct the study and what that involved was us going in every two weeks mobility scoring every cow in the herd and treating them as soon as they were identifiably 
uh, lame or had identifiably impaired mobility. So most of these cows we were picking up as soon as they went score two. And what we see is over the 50 weeks of the study, by the time that we finished the study, this farm was down to 10% of cows identifiably lame. And that 10% were all score twos, none of them were score threes. That's the only thing that changed, was going in every two weeks, mobility scoring, and treating cows as soon as they were lame. And we saw this big reduction on this, on this unit. So this approach really does appear to work and, and to deliver um, results. So really, in conclusion, a uh, few key points. Early and effective treatment is, is one of the, one of the, uh, is the approach I'd like to, I'd like to encourage. Um, so what do we mean? We mean er, by early, we mean the early identification of cows as soon as they are identifiably score two, um, and then the effective and rapid treatment. Uh, and one of the things we've identified in some of the other work that we've been doing is the barriers to treating lame cows. Because it, I know as well as you, and, and I absolutely accept, that treating lame cows is not particularly easy. It can be a real pain in the neck job if um, facilities and setup aren't adequate. But what we also know is people find it a very, a very rewarding and gratifying job. So the other thing I would be encouraging is, is getting a, a setup for treating lame cows which is easy to use. So that might be investing in some good quality kit, some good quality knives, a knife sharpener so that the, the knives stay sharp, and getting a, your crush set up in a location um, which is easy to use and easy to load cows in, and in a nice working environment, so out of the, out of the elements. And then finally, it's around uh, making sure that those people treating cows on farm know what they're doing. Uh, so this is not something that, that we're born with the ability to do. So making sure that people treating lame cows are appropriately trained and have been on courses. So it's early identification, um, getting treatment set up well, and then making sure that people um, uh, know what they're doing when they're treating lame cows. And as this demonstrates, uh, it really is a, a, an approach that will deliver on farm. And of course, the last thing uh, I, we will be able to do over the coming months is quantify the cost benefit of this approach because of course mobility scoring and treating every two weeks is, is an investment of, of time and effort and of course we need to be able to demonstrate that that is, that is worthwhile and delivers cost benefit on farm. Thank you.